hi everyone and welcome back to my channel so i know it has been such a long time since i have posted on here i have just been so busy um but i'm back and we're going to be doing um some more tutorials now what my plan is is to do some focus tutorials so we're going to do um as you can see a dog eye study there's going to be a dog nose a dog mouth different types of fur all in separate videos before we then do a full dog tutorial um, and I just thought by breaking it down into smaller sections you're not worrying about completing a whole piece um, we're just going to take it nice and steadily and just learn how to build up different areas and different um, parts of a dog now I hope to do this with different animals cats um, horses some wildlife but I'm starting in my comfort zone of dogs Everything you need is listed uh, below. It's all linked on my website, the reference photo, the line art, materials list, etc. Um, so we are starting with a dog eye and this is a border collie eye. We're just doing the one eye. Obviously the link to the reference photo has the whole piece and I am using my trusted Fabriano Artistico. Um, as with most of my tutorials, I will be using the Faber-Castell Polychromos to do this. Um, if you want to join my Patreon, all of the tutorials over there use just the Faber-Castell Polychromos because I know it can get expensive trying to buy all the different brands. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start waffling now. It's been a very long introduction um, and I hope you enjoy uh, this video back on YouTube. So when we're looking at a dog's eye, what I want to do first is map in the shape of the eye. So this means the outside of the eye and I do tend to come in and map in the dark shadows as well. So I'm going to take my dark sepia um, and we're just going to use a light pressure. I've just got a piece of paper to put under my hand here. I'm going to just use a very light pressure to just start outlining the shape of the eye. So I'm not really focusing on the guidelines that I've got here. I've got a few more guidelines than I would probably actually use. Um, But we're just going to come up and around here and then I'm just going to lightly bring in this dark sepia because this is where it's going to start to blend into that really nice orangey red eye. But I'm just, as I say, mapping in the shapes whenever you're drawing something like a an eye, well whatever you're drawing, whenever you're drawing something, try not to think, right, I'm drawing an, an eye try and just look at the shapes that you can see everything comes down to shapes when we're doing something like this this bit here is nice and dark And again, just lightly blending in here because we want it all to blend really smoothly as well. So it's going to be a lot of blending to build up um, these layers how I want it to look. And already you can see how you're just starting to build up very easily. How... Uh, the shape of this eye so already you've got the shape mapped in just gonna again lightly bring in where i've got some of that shadow it's quite a dark eye actually in some areas and then in the middle of this eye we've got that darker pupil so i'm just gonna sort of lightly bring in this darker centered area now you'll notice I've not lifted any of the graphite where I've gone in with a dark sepia because I know that this area, these areas are going to be really dark. So the point that I'll probably come in with a black, but I like to map everything in first of all with the dark sepia. Now what I want to do is bring in um, the uh, lighter tones around the eye itself. So I like to map in the shape of the eye and then bring in the centre of the eye. So we're going to just lift the graphite. So I'm using my putty eraser to lift the graphite, like so. <clears throat> so 
just gonna again lift my oops graphite. So I'm gonna take the ivory and anywhere where you can see that um, orange tone, I'm just gonna come in and I'm doing circular motions so that I get a nice smooth base layer with the ivory. Now we've got to remember with eyes, and we will discuss this more as we build up the eye itself, they are spherical, so we want to create that 3D look in the eye. And that's why I'm doing circular motions as well, just to help with uh, creating this effect. I'm also just going to take my warm grey wool and what I'm going to do with this warm grey one is just along this edge and over this um, dark sepia and just blend into the ivory. Now I'm doing this just to help create a smoother layer where we've got that dark sepia but also it's not in these corners, it's not quite a vibrant uh, orange tone, it's more dulled down and I find to get that duller tone, I like to use my grey tones. So my warm grey one. You could also use like a warm grey three uh, to create the base layer. Um, but I'm finding that the warm grey one to blend into this ivory is going to be a lot nicer. And again, just over the top here. So you can see we're just smoothing out this layer of the dark sepia ready for when we come in uh, on the eye. Now this eye is quite bright, um, but in the center, I'm gonna start with the light yellow ochre. This is gonna give us that yellow tone that we can see underneath. And I'm just gonna follow the shape of the eye. So as I mentioned earlier, remembering that it's spherical. So I'm doing sort of these curved lines as I follow the shape of the eye. But I, I say I'm doing curved lines, I'm not making it so it's noticeably curved, but the way that I'm applying the pencil is more curved, using just the one side of the pencil, the flat edge, to get a lay down. And then if you're finding that you, you're not getting much lay down, use the sharper point of the pencil. To get that really nice lay down. And this... As you can see, with the more layers we add, the smoother the paper gets. So we're building up our layers, and it's a lot smoother than here, where we've only got the one uh, layer of pencil. Oh, I want to bring in those nice orange and red tones. So I'm going to start with the sanguine, and we're just going to. I'm going to start with those circular motions as I build up this outside edge here, and then we're just going to lightly bring it into the center and as I'm bringing it in I still want that yellow tone to shine through so I'm lifting the pressure not pressing as hard on the paper as we do so so we're creating this kind of almost like a ring around this eye at the moment Again, lifting that pressure as we come over. The centre there. Um, and then we want our burnt sienna because this is going to bring in that nice rich red tone. And I'm going to come along the bottom edge of the eye here. Now I'm going to go over where we've got that dark, dark sepia because this is gonna help us blend it all together. So we want it to be really smoothly blended. Again, you can see I'm using really light pressure as we come in and over, and I'm blending over the sanguine as well. So everything is about just going over these different colors and areas so that we really build up a nice smooth blend. And you should be able to see, I'm just again following that shape of the eye as I come across these areas. So just kind of following that spherical shape, the 3D shape, because we want these eyes to look 3D. We'll also be building it up to look really glossy, because obviously we want the eye to be um, glassy looking. And to do that, we just need to keep layering and building up our 
uh, colours. So I'm just going to come back in with that light yellow ochre, but just over this sort of highlighted area, so this little bit that we've got left, and over the sand green. So that'll just make this lighter tone pop again. And you can really see the difference now. The more layers we're building up, the more the grain of the Fabriano is disappearing. The great thing about this paper is you can just add so many layers. Now, we've got this really sort of bright red tone around the eye. Um, so to achieve that, I'm actually going to take one of my red pencils and I'm going to take the dark red. So if you don't have the dark red, um, you can use sort of a middle cadmium red, your deep red. If you have no red uh, pencils at all, uh, just keep going in with your burnt sienna and maybe a bit of the green gold, which will just help brighten up that burnt sienna. So with the dark red, again, I'm just going to follow that shape along this bottom edge. And already you can see how bright this red is. So it's going to give us those kind of fiery orange that we're looking for. Blending around and anywhere where I can just see this red, I'm just coming in building it in so the way that i like to work is to just build up lots of layers of color because it's really just going to help make these eyes look really vibrant and all the different layers especially using the polychromos which are transparent pencils they're just going to shine through and just help create this um 3d effect to your eyes then coming along this side blending and across the top here going back to the sanguine so as i say i do a lot of blending and a lot of layers going over that deep red uh, dark red sorry and just again bringing in this sanguine and already you can see this nice transition from the yellow to the orange to the red Now, what I also want to do is bring in a nice transition along this um, bottom edge from the dark sepia to the brown of the eye. So to do that, I'm going to take my burnt umber. So this is going to help blend into the eye. So if you remember that it's a spherical eye, but the eye socket is set in. Uh, so the eye set is set into the, uh, the dog. So we want to take the burnt umber along this bottom edge and I'm just going to blend upwards. So harder pressure at the bottom and then just lighten that pressure as you come into the um the eye the red tones and this burnt umber will be a nice transition into what when we uh, darken all of this up again so again just come in along here and you can come into this dark sepia area if you need help to sort of blend it out like so and you can see how it's just creating that depth underneath to show that this eye is set in place I'm going to do the same along here and I'm using a sharp pencil and quite firm pressure but as I'm blending out I'm lifting the pressure off the pencil it's just so we're creating that as I say that spherical 3d look to our eyes we're also building in the shadows by doing this so it's going to really start to give a, a different look to the eye and then I want to do the same along this edge as well. Okay, so before I go any further, we've got sort of a, a really deep reddish tone um, in this corner. So I'm going to start with the um, Burnt Sienna. I'm just going to blend that outwards. And then I'm also going to take the, uh, not the dark, the red violet. So this is like a really purplish red tone and that's kind of the colour I'm seeing. You could also use the Kaput Mortem Violet. Um, or even the Kaput Mortem, um, but I'm really seeing this kind of red violet. So as I said, I do use quite a lot of colours, but this is just how I work. If you see different colours, use the colours you see. If you don't see as many colours, 
feel free not to add as many colours. Uh, then I'm going back with that burnt umber. I'm going to just blend up and then, as I say, lifting the pressure here. I'm also just going to take this burnt umber as the shadow along the top of the eye. So remembering that the eye is set inwards, so in, in a socket, the uh, this area above is obviously above the eye, so it's creating this shadow. So I always, if you can see it in the reference photo, create this shadow because it's going to add to that 3D effect, which we are obviously looking for. Okay, I'm just going to go back to that sanguine. Um, and then a little bit more of this dark red because I feel like that red's just kind of faded into the background a little bit. Blending over the burnt umber, remembering I just want it all to look really smooth, doing those circular motions. To bring this out to the forefront. Now, in this middle section, we've got sort of a, a paler uh browny purple tone so i'm going to start with the warm gray one as the base layer because then we can easily blend into that light yellow ochre now if you have the luminance i would probably use like the uh, sepia 50 percent in this section just going over that dark sepia in the center here we'll also be using our blues the blues are really going to help make this eye pop uh, especially with these bright orange tones as I mentioned, you could use the sepia 50% from the Caran d'Ache, but because I'm only going to use the uh, polychromos, I'm going to start with the nugget. And I'm just going to, as I said, come in and just blend very lightly over the top here. And this is just going to give us a nice transition between the light yellow ochre and into this sort of darker toned area. Just going to take the light yellow ochre and just again going over the edge here. And you can see how that just blends in really neatly. Um, right, so as I look at this, it's quite quite dark. I think what I'm actually going to do is take um, the Payne's Grey. Sorry, I've just knocked everything out of the way. There we go. Taking the Payne's Grey, so this is where we start to bring in those blue tones. And I'm just going to come across the top of the eye here. And just follow the shape. So remember, eyes are always reflecting what they can see around them. So that's what's happening here. And then as we come down, I'm just going to sort of lightly map in where this Payne's Grey is. And just increasing my pressure once I'm happy with where I've mapped that circular shape within the eye here. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the red violet. Light pressure, I'm not pressing hard. Just want to bring in that sort of purplish tone that we can see in this section of the eye. And just lightly blending. And then I'm going to take the burnt umber. So I'm going to again come in light pressure. And I'm doing circular motion so that it builds up really nicely. There's also sort of some little linear lines coming out. So you can just bring them in as you're coming down and around this eye with the burnt umber. And this will just help create, again, that, that little bit of detail within the eye. Okay, I'm going to go back to my uh, dark sepia. Now I'm going to use this quite lightly. But it is a dark centre of this eye, so we're just going to come in over the top of that burnt umber. Okay, 
can go over that Payne's grey because that'll just help deepen that up as well. And then back to my nugget to help blend outwards. My light yellow ochre once more, blending. And as you can see, you can just see how we're trying to get this really nice smooth blend and transition between all these colours. Then one thing I'm going to do is just take my ivory. I'm going to use a sharp point. I'm going to press quite firmly. And it's going to just kind of create a nice highlight there. And then coming around, I'm just going to follow the spherical shape of the eye. To create that highlight there. And just doing the same on this side. Just to create a smoother highlight. And once we bring in those really deep darks, this will really help make this eye look glossy. Back to that Payne's Grey, and we're going to just really press firmly now and really deepen up this blue tone in the centre of the eye. Also just going to sort of bring in a little bit of blue along this edge because that'll help with the contrast and the shadows. So just where that burnt umber is, just bringing in a little bit of this blue along the edge of the eye and also at the top of the eye here. You can really see how it just helps those oranges really pop. Okay, so the top part of this eye is this obviously blue highlight. So I'm just going to make sure I've lifted the graphite. And I'm going to start with the cold grey one as the base layer. Uh, because we've got that really nice blue tone. So coming in with the warm grey one, and again, remembering that this is a sphere, so we're kind of just following the bend and the curves in the eye. As we come over this edge, it's getting a little bit lighter, so we're just going to reduce our pressure a little bit with the cold grey one. But as we build up the blue tones, we're going to keep this area nice and light. So I always make sure that I've covered the paper with pencil. I'm also just going to take my uh, white pencil just to dab in this area where I want it to keep light. With the white polychromos, any areas that you want to stay really white, you can press quite firmly and it acts as like a resist. It's harder to get a lot more layers on top. So in this corner here, I just want a really hard white pressure. And then I'm just going to lightly come over and just blend over the top here. Now in these uh, blue tones, I am going to take, um, let's have a look what blues I've got. Um, I think I want my Prussian blue. I really like using the Prussian blue in the eyes. Uh, using it very lightly and I'm just going to come across and we're just going to, any areas where it's nice and blue, just map it in. And then as we come across here, actually, it's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take the light ultramarine. Oops, sorry. I'm going to blend over that Prussian blue. Again, so we get it looking nice and smooth. And then I'm just going to bring it across here. As well. And then if you just use very light pressure, it'll just go over that cold grey one. Going back in with that cold grey one. Harder pressure to keep this area looking a lot lighter and just to push that pigment into the paper. Back with the Prussian blue. Um, and then I am going to take my uh, cold grey 5 um, just to sort of bring down a little bit of the saturation here. Okay, taking my uh, red violet in this corner and then the uh, burnt umber. And quite firm pressure to darken this area up now. Okay, back with the Payne's Grey. So as I say, it's quite a bit of back and forth. 
just notice that I just want to blend here a little bit more but you can see how we've sort of built up the inside of the eye now it doesn't look very uh, realistic at the moment in the sense that we haven't got the outside of the eye uh, dark enough so I'm going to go straight in with the black and these areas where we've got the dark sepia I'm just going to come in now and we're going to kind of outline the eye now as I come in here I don't want too harsh a line here so I'm just going to lightly blend that black into the eye so that we get in this blend so I'm lifting the pressure and blending into the eye where we've got that dark sepia and burnt umber mixture just kind of helping to blend between the different sections okay So like here, just blending, lifting that pressure and blending in. And you can see you get that nice seamless transition. And this black is really going to make everything pop really nicely. Blending that. Down and around. You can really see what a difference it makes. Like this eye is starting to really look like it's getting glossy and it's um set in place come around this bit let me just sharpen this because we've got quite a thin line so any areas which are um, a little bit uh, sharper i'm going to make sure i'm always using a sharp pencil point so with a nice sharp pencil coming in and the blending Okay, and then we've got this nice dark section here. So what we've got now is the eye itself, but I feel like the eyes really don't come together till you bring in the fur around it, which is why I've included a little bit of fur in this uh, part of uh, drawing a dog's eye. Just going to bring this in here. And then what I'm going to do is just lightly blend that down take the Payne's grey for this bit here so it's still a dark toned area but it's just not as dark as the black so I'm just going to come in with the Payne's grey and just blend just also going to take the black here over that Payne's grey again build up that definition I also need to bring in the uh, shadows of the eyelashes on this eye so i'm going to take the dark sepia to do that so taking the dark sepia and just follow that sh spherical shape as you're bringing these in and i'm just flicking so harder pressure at the end and just flick them in and over again they don't need to be a hundred percent like the reference photo just flicking them in and this just really builds up again that definition within the eyes um, or the eye itself so around this eye we want to start bringing in the fur and i'm going to start um, along this top section i think so again i'm just going to lift the graphite and we're going to take our um we're going to do a mixture of the cold grey one and the ba uh, warm grey one as a base. So along this side where we've got a bit more fur, coming in with the cold grey one. I'm not too worried about the graphite lines here because I, um, I will be creating dark fur.
we're just going to lightly blend outwards here because we're going to bring in the warm grey one in a second. I'm going to just bring, following where we've got a little bit of that blue tone, I'm just going to lift a little bit of the graphite. Okay. Taking the warm grey one. And this is where it all really starts to um, come together once you add this sort of out, outer edge of um, the fur, etc. So if you can hear my dog in the background walking. Okay, under this fur we've got a bit of skin showing through um, so to, before we come in and add any of the fur definition we're going to build up the colours underneath starting with that nugget again so just where we've got this sort of um, skin showing through on the top of the eye here now one thing again is I don't want any of these harsh lines I want it to look really nice and smooth so I want to blend this out so I'm just going to take the burnt umber and just blend that a little bit over the top of the nugget and then we can take our Payne's grey and just soften this edge so just blending that edge outwards and can you see now we get this nice transition between the eye and what will be the skin of the, uh, the dog or the skin around the dog's eye I'm just going to bring that Payne's Grey all the way down here as well because this bit is more blue toned so we're just going to blend out here okay um, then I'm going to take my uh, warm grey 5 over the top of this nuggety toned area again just knocking back a bit of the browns but so that we can blend into the fur blending back over with a warm grey one now this area here is quite dark so I'm just going to come in straight away with the Payne's Grey and I'm doing long flicks of my pencil following that curvature now I'll go more into drawing fur in a uh, separate part but we're following that curvature of the uh, the structure and the fur the fur direction because it's going to build up the um, shape of the dog's head once you draw a full head And then I'm just going to kind of flick it down into that warm grey. And then take the warm grey 5 again, just flick upwards. So I want this all to blend seamlessly. So it's going to be, again, a little bit of back and forth here before I come in with a little bit of detail. Okay, so you can see how that's just coming together really nicely there. Back in with that Payne's Grey. Fall in that fur direction. Once we bring that fur direction down here, but we've got a little bit of a lighter area as well. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to kind of flick and leave that little gap showing here. And kind of flick here. And then this bit is darker toned.
Okay, I'm going to take the um, Cold Grey 5 because this is more of a blue toned area. And then I also just want to bring in a little bit more of a blue tone. So I'm just going to take that light ultramarine, which we've used in the eye. Over the top as well. Okay, back to the Cold Grey 5. And I'm just going to create some fur direction. So building up sort of little clumps of fur. And then back to our Payne's Grey, blend that outwards, like so. And again, just flicking now. So it's slowly, as you're following that fur direction, you're slowly building up a little bit of definition as well because I'm rotating the pencil to use the sharp point when I want some little bits of detail but you can see we've slowly built up a little bit of detail within the uh, eye there. I'm just going to go back to that burnt umber so as we've built this up I can see like this bit of skin can be a little bit darker now. I'm just going to flick that down here and then back in with the warm grey five. Okay, I'm going to then take the black pencil and we've got like little bits of fur so I'm just going to kind of flick here and then obviously part of this is going to be dark so just following that fur direction again, flicking down like so. And just flicking some little bits of detail. Like so. So hopefully you can see how that's um come together. So we want to do the same on this side. Um, I'm going to come in first with the Cold Grey 5. Going over that with the Warm Grey 5. Back in with the burnt umber. So even though it's a black and white dog, black dogs have so much colour in their coat. So I'm really making sure that I'm capturing the sort of the different colours, especially around the eye where we've got the little bit of skin showing. But there is sort of this brownish tinge to the fur as well. You take the uh, warm grey five again, and we're just sort of coming down here now. Flicking downwards. Okay, and then the Payne's Grey. So 
So hopefully you can see how that's just kind of flicking upwards. Obviously, if I was doing all of this, I would have a bit more of a uh, blend going on up, along here, but just doing a little bit around the eye, just so you can see how, how it makes the eye look like it's uh, more realistic now. And then coming down here. So what I'm doing here is I'm really looking at that fur direction. It's just changing um, direction a lot, especially around eyes. So it's really important uh, to keep an eye, keep an eye on the fur direction around the eye. So that made me chuckle a little bit. Uh, just going to take the cold grey five again, just to bring in a little bit of that blue tone. I'm doing circular motions here, just where it's a bit more skin like. Now, also, if you've got something like the slice tool, this is a ceramic blade um, and it lifts the pigment off the paper to um, help add detail. So I could come in, if I've got enough layers on the page, uh, you can see I can come in and I can just bring in some details. So I can just flick with the slice tool. And create some little light, uh, little fine details. So you can create some little like spotting going on along the edge here, and little white hairs if it had white hairs. But also come into the eye and just add your little highlights. Um, which will really, again, help create um, that illusion of this being 3D. So that, uh, that is the slice tool and I use the craft knife. But again, I'm just gonna come in and just lift the graphite here. And then uh, this bit is more blue toned, but we've got this sort of dip from the eye. So I'm just gonna do this bit first. So coming in, um, so I'm just moving the reference under the eye with the cold gray one. And then this bit here is going to be more fur-like. So, just again, mapping in a base layer. So with the Fabriano, I always apply a base layer because this helps just to smooth out the two for the paper and it gives us just a nice base to work on when it comes to building up the rest of the colours. So just going to come in. I know I said I was only going to do that little dip, but... If I just get this base in, now you could go in with a darker base uh, because obviously the fur is darker, um, which would speed up the process. Okay, so got a nice base layer to finish off our eye and this will really help you see that this eye is set in place now. So we're going to take our Payne's Grey to help blend from the eye over this little section now. So again, as I've done before, just lightly doing little circular motions coming from this black with the Payne's Grey. And this is sort of a darker bit here. So just going to map that in. Then what I'm going to do with the, uh, the Payne's Grey is just where we've got this fur, just going to follow that fur direction. Just nice light pressure, I'm not darkening any of this up yet. Just following the fur direction. I'm not worried about detail, I'm not worried about the grain showing, I just want to bring in that fur So you'll notice how we've got sort of this like little dip here where we've got uh, the base of the eye. Just going to lightly blend that in with the Payne's Grey. OK, 
Okay, so with this fur, there's a bit more of a blue tone as well. So I'm just going to come in with the light ultramarine over the top. Again, as I've said, I'm not focusing on individual hair strokes. I'm just following that fur direction as I'm building up the colours in this section. I'm going to take the uh, Payne's Grey and this is where we're just going to increase our pressure now and really build up the fur. So I know I keep moving the, uh, the paper, keep knocking it. So you can see how this is really darkening up nicely now. And I'm not focusing, as I said, I'm not focusing on details, just building the colours, just blending out from this black again. Okay, so in this little section here, we're going to take, I want a bit of a lighter uh, tone, hang on. This is my Cold Grey 4. Just going to come across here. Doing that circular motion just so it's nice and smooth. And then again with that burnt umber just to bring in a little bit of the brown. Just so that I've got that nice tinge from uh, what happens when the black fur gets sun bleached. That kind of thing. And then back over with the cold grey fur. I'm going to take the uh, warm grey uh, actually, I'm going to take the dark sepia and we're just going to come over that Payne's grey. This is going to add that nice sort of brownish grey to the fur and just help add that depth as well. Okay, I'm just going to blend upwards here because this is dark and then it can just blend down and into the fur. Like so. Just keeping it nice and smoothly blended. Oops. Back in with the Payne's Grey. So the great thing about this paper, the uh, the Fa Fabriano, is it takes so many layers. So you can really build up the depth really nicely. As you can see, like the amount of layers, especially um, even if you're heavy handed, I find that you can really just keep working with it. And then again, I'm just going to come in here, just blend. Okay, I'm going to take our uh, Cold Grey 5, following that fur direction again. Whoops, I need to take this uh, paper down. <laughs> it's blending out here. The warm grey five, following that direction again, and laying it over the top with firm pressure. Okay, we need to blend these two areas together. So back to the Payne's grey. So back with that Payne's grey, and we're just going to kind of flick some of the. Um, 
details around here some of the fur flick it out here as well then taking our black and this is for any of those final details so any of the sh deepest shadows and any of those little bits of fur that you really want to kind of highlight um, as being uh, separate bits of fur so just kind of flicking again along here and then it comes along here flick upwards Now again, this is obviously quite rough around the edges because we've only done the ice study itself, we've not drawn the fur. But you would just keep layering and keep doing your bases, keep following the fur direction. And then what I'm doing is I'm just looking anywhere now where I just feel I need to darken, maybe just blend. So I'm just going to take the dark sepia in this area circular motions just to kind of darken it up a little bit more and then again if i wanted um to come in with a slice tool i could so i could come in here and just lightly come over and add a few little details and then because we know that this bit isn't literally white fur, I could then just take the cold grey four, or even the cold grey one, I'm going with the cold grey one, to just help blend and smooth out and just kind of push those slice markings into the paper to make it look more natural. Um, just taking that dark sepia here as well because it's a little bit darker there. And there you go, there is a how I draw a realistic uh, dog eye. Now obviously the fur is very rough, it's not about doing the fur, it's all about how I draw the actual eye itself, but once you get the fur around a piece, as you can see it really does help kind of solidify the eye into place. So I hope this has been helpful, I know it's quite long, um, but I've really kind of slowed down and really focused on each individual area for you all. Um, and yeah, I hope drawing the dog's eye um, has been helpful and you can apply it to your future drawings. Um, in the next part, we are going to be drawing a dog's nose. So just focusing on the nose, we will add a little bit of fur around the nose to, again, put it in place. But the main focus will be on the nose itself. Um, so yeah, I am glad to be back to YouTube and I hope to be posting a lot more. See you all in the next video. Bye everybody.